All right, so I just really quickly wanted to show again, um, maybe a reminder for people, or maybe just a different example of how to do error bars in OpenOffice. Um, and this is the free version that you can download. Um, in Excel, it's very, very similar. Um, so just, I'm actually gonna show you two examples. So um, this was the, in case you didn't, here's our population fish pond. Um, and basically I've got, here's my independent variable, my five values of relative fitness, and then my five trials, my average, and my standard deviation, which I've just calculated um, selecting those points. Here's my average. Um, okay, so to put in a chart, you can either select the, so I'm just going to select the heading two, um, and my average, that's what I want to plot, and you can just stick in this chart And you probably want to do a scatter plot. Um, and that is pretty much what I want. I don't need this here. Um, if you want to put in, actually, you should put in titles. Um, most of the things you can get to just by right clicking. Um, so insert titles. You can do chart value. So this is, or my chart title is. Um, R allele frequency after 50 generations um, for different fitness levels of our genotype. Um, and then this is really important. If you have error bars, you're going to put error bars in. You want to say what those represent in your title. Um, there's tons of things that these could be like 95% um, confidence interval, like stuff we haven't talked about, um, but you just want to mention that error bars are one standard deviation. You probably could put a capital SD there, but, um, and then you can put it in all your axes titles. So this is relative fitness. And this is all right. But the part that you actually care about is error bars. Um, and this is pretty easy. So you just want to, you can click on a data point um, and right click and put in insert Y error bars. You might also be able to do this somewhere else. But um, so here's the trick. You don't want to select standard deviation. Um, to be honest, I don't even know what that is, but um, like how they calculate that. But what you want to do is say that you're going to select the cells that have the standard deviation value for each point. Um, and in this case, you know, standard deviation, we're going to go one up from the average, one down from the average. So we can actually put same value for both. And in a second, I might show you how to do the range. Um, so you can either click on this, um, you can either select your points, but I'm going to go to this. It takes you to select the data range. And I'm going to say that these are my standard deviation values. So that I want this standard deviation value to be for this point, this one for this point, um, and clicking same value for both just saves you having to select them twice. Um, and you're probably gonna have a positive and a negative error bar. So we're gonna click on this. Um, it's always a good idea to just check your error bars. So um, like here, you know, my, my point at relative fitness of one, um, does that look like it's, it's like 0.8, or I guess 0 0.09 here? Um, so you want to make sure that these make sense. And actually, yeah, most of the other ones are about the same. So that one's going to be the one that, um, that tells us that we're doing this right. So that is how you do that. Um, yeah, let me know if you, if you have questions. I want to show you guys. Um, so standard deviation, you can really only use if you have five repeated values. It's just considered to be not very, not valid if you have fewer than that. Um, so whatever, for, if, for whatever reason, you don't have five values. So let's say you just you were doing something in class and you had three values. Um, you can't do the standard deviation. You have to do the range. And so here I'm going to put. Um, so for this case, I would want. Actually, I'm going to just move these over here. Average of those. All right, so in this case, I want to know how high is 
So I want to go from the average to the highest data, data point that I have, and then from the average to the lowest data point that I have. Um, so I like to just make a column that's my upper error bar and my lower error bar. Um, and then you have to sort of select for each one um, what's the difference between your highest data points, right? Yes, and your average. Um, and then you could you could do this and just move these around. So you say, yep, 43 is my highest point, or 0.43. Here I'm going to need to move this, so 0.28 is my highest. So you can see that this is the difference between your average and your highest point. Here, that looks good. This one, 0.28 was my highest. And here, 0.21 was my highest. So that works. Um, and then, you know what, this was kind of weird for me earlier, but um, I wanted to get rid of, I don't need a million decimal points there. Um, okay, so for my lower bar, it's going to be similar, but I'm going to do now this one, the average subtract the, the lowest. And let's see here. That's my lowest. That's my lowest. That one looks good. This is my lowest. And I guess you could just put your lowest one in. It doesn't really matter the order of these trials. Um, okay, so now I should have these showing my... Yeah, that one doesn't work for some reason. Um, it's weird. Okay, so now when I make my chart, I'm going to do... And I'm not going to put in all the titles this time. Um, so here's my average. And I'm going to make my chart. I'm going to make a scatter plot. Um, I'm going to just get rid of this. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on these. I'm going to do insert Y error bars. Um, oh, actually, I realize I'm going to need to move this chart so that I can actually see them. Okay, so when I insert Y error bars, um, I'm, again, not going to do standard deviation. I'm going to do cell range. And now I'm going to say for my positive error bar, which I called upper, but whatever. Um, I'm going to say take that value, and then for my negative or my lower error bar, take this value. And so now, the, the range and up here, you would say in your um, in your chart title, uh, error bars are the range. Um, and so now we want to see like for this zero, right? Does it represent our range from 0.12 to 0.21? It does. For 0.2, our lowest one is 0.1 to 0.28. Um, and so, you know, you have you you can see that the range is oftentimes larger than the standard deviation um, because standard deviation will sort of leave out outliers, right? Standard deviation is, I think it's 68% of your values or something, um, one standard deviation. So range is including all of your values. So if you have something that was kind of like an outlier, um, it will be in there. But you can use this, right? So even if you've taken three measurements, um, you know you can tell that, for example, um, this allele frequency at 0.6 is significantly different than 0.8 or 1 um, because, because those error bars don't overlap. Um, but then you're going to see with the chart that we made before. Um, yeah, OpenOffice isn't always as sort of clean as Excel might be. Um, but you can see that with smaller, usually your standard deviation will be smaller, um, and you might be more likely to see the significant differences. Um, but that's just because, you know, with more data, you're able to make sort of more precise conclusions. Okay, so I hope, I hope this helped. Um, it's very, very similar in Excel, so if you have Excel, that's awesome. Um, but I found that most people don't because you have to pay for it. Um, so yeah, let me know if that uh, makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me.